On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including the evolution of Starship is happening right now at Boca Chica, construction of the gigantic Starship factory steps into its next phase, and a new satellite startup wants to leverage the power of Super Heavy to launch bigger, heavier equipment. This is the Space Race. Starbase Boca Chica has seen non-stop activity since the explosive first test launch of their Starship Heavy Lift rocket on April 20th. Construction work to clear the damage and add reinforcements to the launch apparatus are proceeding at a truly incredible pace, but the spectacle of the destroyed launch pad has somewhat overshadowed the work being done right now to progress the Starship design to the next level. Starship observers have been keeping a careful eye on the work being done in the background, so in addition to comments from CEO Elon Musk about Starship's future, we also have some interesting new images of Starship hardware to think about. Let's start with Elon's comments, because they give a bit of a peek into the future of the Starship platform. Just two weeks ago, on May 13th, Elon posted the first acknowledgement that a third variant of the SpaceX Raptor engine was not just in the works, it had just been test-fired for the first time. Maxing out at 350 bar of pressure and 269 tons of thrust, the Raptor V3 was a big improvement on the already impressive Raptor V2 engine that had powered Super Heavy and Starship thus far. The real question was, why did the most powerful rocket ever designed need even stronger engines? The simple answer is that SpaceX has plans to lift much heavier payloads into orbit than the current configuration would allow, and on May 24th, Elon all but confirmed that hypothesis. In response to a post from the Everyday Astronaut about a comparison video that looks at the hardware of Starship versus the Soviet N1, previously one of the most powerful rockets to ever fly, Elon slid into the thread to point out that Starship's payload is 250 to 300 tons to orbit in its expendable mode, the configuration that sacrifices the Super Heavy's landing fuel in order to push the payload into an even higher velocity. This is much higher than the current 150 tons that the vehicle is rated for when fully reusable, and he continued saying, the improved thrust from presumably the Raptor V3 would enable about 6,000 tons of liftoff mass. That's a thousand tons more than the current configurations. So these new Raptors will let the Starship about double its payload capacity. For those doing the math, the extra 700 to 850 tons of liftoff mass will be for the additional fuel needed to accomplish this. And of course, the extra mass of bigger fuel tanks and the general size increase of the rocket overall because the rocket will have to increase in size to accommodate all that extra mass, so we would have to imagine an even taller Starship stack. Now, this seems to be pretty solidly pointing to the idea that SpaceX is interested in hauling very heavy objects into space. Huge things like larger station parts, bigger scientific hardware, and even heavier and more specialized Starship variants, like fuel-filled versions for use in orbit as floating gas stations, and longer duration habitation modules that could take humans further into our solar system. One of the most pressing things SpaceX could want this upgrade for would be to haul extra fuel for their lunar lander. Artemis 3, the first mission to bring humans back to the surface of the moon, will be using the Starship lander after all. And because NASA doesn't expect to have the Lunar Gateway Station up and running by then, SpaceX will need to haul enough fuel to get to the moon, rendezvous with the Artemis 3 Orion capsule, land the astronauts on the moon, and get back into orbit again to hand the crew back to Orion for its trip back home. The extra fuel storage SpaceX could bring on this mission if they have a Raptor 3 array would certainly give the team some breathing room. And speaking of the Starship lander, Artemis 3 is scheduled to launch in 2025. That's only two years to get Starship operational, let alone make a lander variant with a crew cabin and an elevator. We haven't even seen parts for this new Starship yet, but that might have just changed. Thanks to all the excitement at the Starbase launch site, more drones have been flying around getting pictures lately, and some of them have been catching glimpses of some interesting non-standard hardware. Now, obviously SpaceX is constantly coming up with new tweaks to their designs, which allow for greater efficiency and strength, and a couple of things I'm sure they don't want us to know about yet. So, speculating on what all of these pieces are is probably premature, 
but the White Dome and the Reinforced Ring do look like they could belong to the Starship Lander, which will be painted NASA White and feature a ring of thrusters to help land on the moon without blowing a crater in the surface like Super Heavy did to the launch pad back in April. But aside from looking non-standard, there's not much more to go off of, but the timing is suspicious. If SpaceX intends to nail that NASA schedule and have a lander ready for 2025, we should be seeing at least parts for a prototype coming together for testing soon. But that, plus the new engine, really signal that big changes are happening to the Starship design. It's pretty wild that the SpaceX team built the strongest rocket ever made and then decided it wasn't strong enough. We can't wait to see what they intend on lifting with all that extra thrust power. With all the repair work being done at the SpaceX Boca Chica launch facility, it's easy to forget that the site has been under near constant construction since 2019. The expansion of buildings desperately trying to keep pace with the company's need to design and construct new Starship prototypes. Over the course of the last four years, Starbase has seen the addition of test stands, rocket construction bays, and even the gigantic tents that are currently used for the more delicate parts of the Starship construction. But in March 2022, SpaceX broke ground on something new, something more permanent. It's called Star Factory, and just like with CEO Elon Musk's other company, Tesla, it would graduate Starbase from the disconnected tent and bay facilities dotted around the site now to one gigantic factory capable of assembling the world's largest rocket. The Star Factory is meant to replace the current setup with a permanent structure large enough to house the assembly of many super heavy boosters and Starship vehicles a 300,000 square foot building with a ceiling about 60 feet tall should do that job nicely, and they've just hit a milestone. Recent aerial photography of the site shows that many of the phase one footings are already in place. Footings are concrete pads sunk into the ground which hold a building up. At Boca Chica, these are those smaller concrete squares you can see in the images. Now don't be fooled, each of those squares has been poured around a pile, sort of like an underground column, that transfers the load of a building into the bedrock. SpaceX is actually putting similar piles into their pad surrounding the orbital launch mount to increase its stability. From the pictures, we can also see that large sections of the foundation pad have been poured at the Star Factory site as well, meaning we're not too far away from seeing the steel skeleton of the building being assembled. Structures like this tend to go up very quickly, especially in humid locations like Boca Chica. But from older discussion of the size of this new factory, it looks like this isn't even half of what the final structure will look like. And that means some of the older buildings in these photos are bound for demolition. Eventually, SpaceX plans to disassemble the tents as well, but not until the Star Factory is up and running, of course. And they might even keep them up for a bit afterwards to help with the production load that will likely come with the first burst of Starship activity that is going to hit the company once they get their new vehicle certified for regular flights. For now though, it looks like SpaceX is taking advantage of all the construction equipment and personnel being on site for the landing pad repairs to start making the push to get Star Factory's foundation and steel structure built. Phase 1 shouldn't see much difficulty with its construction, but the rest of the building will have to wait until SpaceX can clear the older structures off the site. Starship hasn't even made it to space yet, but companies are lining up to make use of the gigantic rocket's lift capabilities. Last week, we talked about Vast and their partnership with SpaceX to sprint ahead of all the other space launch companies and create the first commercial space station, Haven 1, using the Falcon 9 first, and then the Starship to deliver larger modules once it becomes available. Well, not to be outdone, a new startup called K2 is planning to use Starship's enormous lift capabilities to help put some very large satellites in orbit very cheaply. So K2 wants to develop a system of satellite buses, smaller vehicles that get deployed with satellites and ferry them to their destinations once in space. Think about Rocket Lab's photon kicker stage, and you'll have the right idea. The K2 brothers aren't attempting to get satellites into lunar orbit just yet, so their first pass at this will likely be a simple tug with efficient thrusters, about 1 ton to 15 tons, with extra communications equipment to ensure the payloads get to where they are going. That sort of system could certainly work with Starship, and it would be flexible enough to handle various sizes of payload. Founded by two brothers, 
K2 believes there's a gap in the market for this sort of system. Specifically, they want to facilitate the launch of some very large gear or a massive amount of smaller vehicles. The idea is that Starship, once completed, will be able to help bring down the costs in a similar way to the Falcon 9, which is the thought behind Starship for sure. SpaceX wants to make a rapidly reusable system with Starship, with early goals from the company CEO Elon Musk saying that he envisions a 30-minute turnaround between launches of the rocket. And the brothers aren't wrong about there being a gap in the industry for larger payload maneuvering as well. Vehicles like Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope are difficult to service right now without the old shuttles, and maneuvering around larger objects like the many station modules from several companies that will be launching this decade is also difficult. Starship can't really waste fuel moving station bits around, especially when it's not designed for that. And with most of the industry fighting over mini-sat and small launch vehicles right now, this is a pretty safe move for a new company. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.